So, uh, we're done, people, we're done. <laughs> Our final nights in Cleveland, uh, the Republican National Convention is over. Uh, and at this rate, pretty soon, the country will also be over. <laughs> And yesterday, Donald Trump spent his entire 75-minute speech pitching a horror movie about how uh, a fictional America is a place where you should be afraid of everything. <laughs> uh, now, we, we had a whole show planned about Trump, you know? We had him in, like, a Jason mask, and we had all these jokes <laughs> about that. But then a few hours ago, we were like, f*** it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, to be honest, like, we, we always talk about Trump, all of us, all of us. You know, the guy says anything, and it's news, like, he farts from his mouth and we talk about it for hours, you know, like... <laughs> oh, what do you think that smell means? But, but you know what? <laughs> his convention is over. It's over. He said what he needed to say, and, and later, uh, later on in the show, we'll break down how much bull he spoke. But for now, let's, let's talk about something else. Because it was easy to forget this week that while this show was going on, <laughs> other things were still happening in the world. You know, the British appointed their second ever female prime minister, uh, yeah. Um, America maybe bombed 70 civilians in Syria, and just a week after peak tension around police shootings, this happened. A behavioral therapist was shot by an officer after he held his hands in the air, lying on the ground. He was in the street trying to retrieve an autistic man who wandered away from a group home. Just moments before the shooting, you can see 47-year-old Charles Kinsey, his hands raised in the air. He told police not to fire, but an officer shot him in the leg anyway. Anyway? <laughs> shot him in the leg anyway? Oh, it's almost like the cop was like, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm here, so I might as well, uh... <laughs> and now, now, luckily, as horrible as the story is, there is some good news. The man who was shot, Charles Kinsey, is in good shape and is expected to make a full recovery. So that is good news. That is good news. <laughs> in fact, in fact, and, and this is, <laughs> this is true, uh, the Florida native even said when he was shot, he thought he was being bitten by a mosquito, <laughs> which... Which sounds ridiculous until you see the mosquitoes in Florida. Then, <laughs> then you understand. But, but really, people? The guy got shot while lying down on the ground with his hands in the air. And at this point, I no longer know what black people need to do to not get shot. Because I, I, I don't understand. You, you walk towards a policeman, you get shot. Walk away from a policeman, you get shot. You lie down on the ground with your hands in the air, you still get shot. You're on the ground, you're lying down. There's, there's no other way to be less threatening and still be black. Like, at this rate, I wouldn't be shocked if we start hearing police are shooting black people in their graves. You know, it's just like, <laughs> well, what happened, officer? Well, the suspect was uh, decomposing in a manner that was threatening, <laughs> and uh, I had to defend myself. And look, some people might say, oh, well, maybe the cop had a reason to shoot. Well, it turns out that's not true. He didn't have a good reason. In fact, the policeman didn't even have a reason. When he hit me, I'm like, I still got my hands in the air. I said, no, I just got shot. And I'm standing there, so I'm like, sir, why did you shoot me? And his, ex and his words to me, he said, I don't know. You know what? That, uh, that answer's, uh, it's actually refreshing. Yeah, no excuses. No shifting the blame, just, I don't know. Kind of reminds me, kind of reminds me of myself as a kid. You know, my, my mom would come in, and be like, why did you draw on the wall? And I'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> That's exactly how I looked. <laughs> I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't know why I drew on the wall. I just, like, I was just like, there's crayons and there's a wall and, you know, and if there's walls and if there's crayons, I'm, I'm gonna draw. I, I have nothing against walls, but it's just like, if there's crayons around and there's walls, someone's gonna get hurt. <laughs> and my mom would be like, yeah, you. But, but what makes the story even crazier is the fact that the cop fired three times. He fired three shots. Yeah, because they say shot like it was one bullet. And yes, one bullet hit the person, but the cop pulled the trigger, the trigger three times by mistake. I mean, I understand one bullet, but three? Like, what is the, what is the cop going, why, why did you shoot three times? Like, well, what happened was, uh, after I fired the first shot, uh, shots had been fired and I had to defend myself. So, uh, <laughs> so this is really, uh, you know... The story is so twisted. And the crazy thing is, it gets even twistier. The police union representing the officer said that the cop was actually trying to shoot the autistic man, but he missed. Oh, oh, that, that explains it. 
We thought you were trying to shoot, but here we are judging because we thought you were trying to shoot an unarmed black, but it turns out you were shooting an autistic person who posed no threat. Oh, now I get it. Now I get it. You know, the more the story plays out, the crazier and crazier the report gets. And police say it all started when they got a call about a man threatening suicide. Really? So wait, let me understand this. Someone called the police and told them that a person was trying to shoot themselves. And the police response was, hey, we need to stop someone from shooting themselves. Quick, get your guns, get your guns. <laughs> How does that work? You know, you know we, can, we can spend all of our time vilifying the police, trying to place blame on either side of every single story. But I'm sorry, I've, I've got to say it. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. In America, the job of a police officer is way too broad. We expect the police to handle everything. Someone has a broken taillight, the police need to handle it. Someone's robbing a bank, a bank, the police need to handle that as well. Like your neighbor's playing loud music, you call the police for that. A person with mental health issues, maybe threatening to harm themselves, the police need to handle that as well. We're asking too much of them, which is not right. Obviously, things are gonna go wrong. It's, it's a recipe for disaster. For instance, think of it like this. When we're flying, we don't do that. We don't call the pilot when we want to drink. Because we know pilots have a separate job, and that job is to keep us safe in the air. The same way flight attendants have a separate job, and that job is to stop people from banging in the bathroom. That's what we know. <laughs> yeah. That's what they've been trained for. Peanuts, yes. Peanuts, no. <laughs> they've been trained for that. And the reason... The reason we don't ask the pilot to do it is because we know it could go terribly wrong. If the pilot was doing this, we'd be like, stop them from having sex. We'd be like, okay, hey, stop having sex. No, okay. <laughs> Why did you crash the plane? Well, it's the only way I knew how to stop them. <laughs> and how are you still alive? It's for the purposes of this joke. Leave me alone. <laughs> look, look, America, if we want to help minorities, one of the ways we can do it is by helping the police. Because if this carries on, the distrust that citizens have in the police will rise. The police will feel more and more threatened by the public that doesn't trust them, and the cycle will only continue to get worse. And that, that Donald J. Trump is something to really be afraid of. Hey there, it's The Daily Show's Trevor Noah. We have our own YouTube channel now, so uh, please do subscribe. Uh, I'll, I'll wait so you can, I won't even look. Just because I know that's weird. It's sort of like when a dog's doing its thing. You can just, yeah, just subscribe. I won't, I won't look.